Hello all, welcome to the session. This session is all about how to get 20 plus in SBI Clerk 2021. Before I go, I give the tips to you people, just a recollection of the syllabus. When it comes to English language from competitive exams point of view, especially bank exams point of view, there are three major areas. One is grammar, the other one reading comprehension skill, and the next one is vocabulary. Reading comprehension skill and vocabulary, they go hand in hand. Now, today I'm going to give the strategy how to get 20 plus, and I'm going to give the topics, exam point of view, grammar related, comprehension related, and uh, vocabulary related. Then I'm going to give the tips. Now, broad strategy, what should be your strategy when it comes to uh, SBI Clerk 2021 to get 20 plus? You have to learn 200 grammar rules. You must have learned already, but you have to consolidate all these rules. And when I say you have to consolidate what I mean, you should have all the rules at your fingertips. And you have to be very good at 50 sleeps topics. Sleeps is an acronym I have given already. The letters stand for science and technology, legal, education, economy, polity, and sociocultural problems. 50 topics in the limelight, burning topics. You should have the information. You should have the lexical terms. You should know the word combinations. That will definitely help in the exam. And you have to learn about 100 root words. 100 root words, when you come across in the exam, there's every possibility for you to come across new words. And when you come across a new word, you have to look at the meaning. You have to guess the meaning based on the roots, based on the prefixes, based on the suffixes. So 100 root words will be useful. Then you have to learn about 1,000 editorial words. Every day I bring one editorial, I bring about 10 to 15 words, and I give the related words. So 1,000 editorial words, which go with effective English, will definitely help you in the exam. And you should practice 30 editorial exercises. You have to take 30 mock tests, and you have to work on previous year's papers. This is a broad strategy. Now let us go to each one and see. First, what the syllabus is, then the tips, how to handle, how they ask the questions. As I said in the last video, I said I would bring the examples. Today, you can see a few questions and get an idea how they ask questions in the exam. Now, when it comes to grammar, you should learn 200 grammar rules. That's what I said. And what are the main topics, grammar point of view? Parts of speech, tenses, voice, speech, conditionals, concord. A parallel expression and redundancy. The last two are very important. Now, let us see how they ask the questions. From each area, a few questions I have brought based on each area. And I'll read out the question first. And I'll wait for a few seconds so that you can think of the error. Each sentence in each sentence is an error. The first one, the team of Indian scientists have visited the forest. Now, this has been given many a time in competitive exams. Where is the error? Every sentence is an error, mind you. The team, what is the subject of this sentence? The team, that's a collective noun. Collective nouns usually take a singular verb. If the sentence talks about division, then we have to use a plural verb and a plural pronoun. But there is no division, then we have to use a singular verb with a collective noun. Here there is no division. Based on that, the team of Indian scientists, of Indian scientists, that's a phrase. Have is not correct. It should be has. The team has visited the forest. The team of Indian scientists has visited the forest. Neither of the students have come. Now, the first one goes with collective nouns. Second one, it goes with pronouns. Neither nor conjunctions, but either, neither, each. These are distributive pronouns. They always take a singular verb. Based on that, where is the error? Neither of the students has come. Have come is not correct. It should be has come. We are discussing about politics. This question goes with prepositions. It's a common error. Certain verbs, after certain verbs, you should not use any preposition. What is a verb over here? Discuss. A lot of people say we are discussing. When you ask the question, what are you doing? They say, we are discussing about religion. We are discussing about movies. Not correct. Discuss. After that, don't use any preposition. We are discussing politics. About should not be there. Now, coming to the next one, he is learning English for the last two months. These questions go with uh, tenses. The first three questions, they go with parts of speech. 
Now these questions go with tenses. He is learning English. This is present continuous tense for the last two months. When it comes to errors related to tenses, you should always focus on the time phrase. What is the time phrase here? For the last two months. For the last two months, it goes with present perfect continuous. But here you see present continuous, which is not correct. Based on that, what is the correct sentence? He has been learning English for the last two months. He is learning is not correct. He has been learning. How long? For the last six months. The manager shall assign the work soon. This is also a common error. It goes with future tense. In future tense, all the future tenses, the basic rule, we use will and shall with first person singular and plural. We use only will with other pronouns. What is the subject here? Manager. That is third person singular. We cannot say shall. It should be will. Based on that, what is the correct sentence? The manager will assign the work soon. They started the party before he arrived. This is also a common error. This is what a lot of people say. And here there are two actions. The first action, they started the party. The second action, he arrived. When there are two actions that happened in the past, one after the other, we should use past perfect for the first one and past tense for the second one. Based on that, they started is not correct. It should be. They had started the party before he arrived. The work has been completed by them. These two questions go with passive voice. The work has been completed by them is not correct. It should be. The work has been completed by them. They have completed the work, active voice. The same sentence in passive voice. The work has been completed by them. A letter was wrote by the manager yesterday. When you see the word yesterday, you should tell yourself this should be in past tense. A letter was wrote and it is in passive voice. Any sentence in passive voice, do remember the main verb is always in past participle form. Based on that, this is not correct. It should be. A letter was written by the manager yesterday. Now, these two questions go with direct speech and indirect speech. She said that she is listening to music. Actual statement, she said, I'm listening to music. Present continuous changes to past continuous because a reporting verb is in past. Then this sentence is not correct. It should be. She said that she was listening to music. He asked me what was my what was my name. This is a common error they have given in so many exams. He asked me what my name was. When you change a question from direct speech to indirect speech, the interrogative form should be changed to affirmative form. But a lot of people, they use the sentence in interrogative form, which is not correct. He asked me what was my name. That is interrogative, not correct. He asked me what was my name. Absolutely wrong. He asked me what my name was. Then it is correct. If you worked hard, you will get success. Now, these two questions go with conditionals, an important topic. If you work hard, you will get success. Here, you should look at the main clause. You will get success. That is in future tense. Then the if clause should be in present. But here it is in past. If you work hard, you will get success. Then it is correct. If I had money, I would have helped you. The main clause, I would have helped you. Then you, when you look at that, you should think of past conditional. Past conditional, if clause, we use past perfect tense. But here it is in past. So it is not correct. If I had had money, had had, it is absolutely right. If I had had money, I would have helped you. The number of subscribers have gone up. Now these questions go with phrases. What is the subject here? The number. The number always takes a singular verb. Based on that, the number of subscribers has gone up. Have is not correct. It should be has. Two thirds. This is a subject. It's a fraction. When the subject is a fraction, after that you find a phrase. What is the phrase here? Of the book. In the phrase, there is a noun. What is that noun? Book. Based on the noun in the phrase, we have to use the verb. Book is a singular. So we cannot use are interesting. Book is interesting. Based on that, what is the correct sentence? Two thirds of the book is interesting. These two questions go with a parallel expression and redundancy. She likes reading, swimming and likes to shop. Reading, swimming. Third one also should be in ing form. You cannot say likes to shop. That is not parallel expression. So it is not correct. What is the correct expression? She likes reading, swimming and shopping. Then it is correct. 
he returned back from bombay yesterday this goes with redundancy a return means to come back you should not use the word back he returned from bombay yesterday then it is correct now what are the tips i would like to give a few tips how to spot the errors when it comes to error location whenever you read a sentence you have to look for the time phrase time phrases are very important the moment you spot the time phrase based on the time phrase you can decide the tense then you look for the error you can easily spot the error this is the best tip i can give then if you see the word if in the sentence think of conditionals it could be open conditional hypothetical conditional past conditional or zero conditional but the moment you spot the word if think of conditionals when you see words like said asked ordered requested think of indirect speech could be a statement could be a command could be a question could be a request when you see a verb in past participle form this is very important it could be a perfect tense or it could be in passive voice all the tenses whatever the sentence pattern do remember when it comes to passive voice the main verb is always in past participle form and after that look at the let's say you have tried all these and you could not spot the error look at individual words parts of speech related and try to recollect the rules rules related to nouns pronouns all these and after that still you could not spot the error look at the subject look at the verb and think of subject verb agreement concurred these are the tips you have to keep in mind while you attempt when you attempt the questions related to error location and if you keep all these in mind at your fingertips and read the sentence within no time you will be able to spot the error now that's all about grammar part now what should be the strategy when it comes to reading comprehension skill which is a deciding factor i have already given the acronym sleeps and you have to read 50 sleep topics when i say you have to read what i mean you should be thorough with the information you should know all the lexical terms that go with those topics that means the related words and you should know the word combinations that go with those topics then you are ready for the exam and i cannot do all the 50 today i have brought some important topics in my opinion anything related to covid you may get in the exam as a passage as a close or para jumble very important what is the second topic here zoonotic diseases what does it mean an infectious disease spreads from animals to man or from man to animals then we use the term zoonotic diseases today this covid it is one of the examples for zoonotic diseases and they may give a passage already you have an idea about that then easy to read and comprehend and answer the questions and you can do it with a lot of ease vaccines very important topic health infrastructure today india is suffering so much because we don't have the right health infrastructure because of that a lot of people are dying and the doctors are going upside down to handle the situation online classes again because of covid-19 lockdown uh, online classes have become very popular and that's an important topic environment is a broad topic there's so many topics over here like pollution Uh, extinct species endangered species ozone depletion oil spills and deforestation so many loss of habitat whatever goes with environment you have to read and have the information mission to mars that's also an important topic artificial intelligence and automation these two topics 5 years down the line they will definitely ask in some form or other prelims or mains or descriptive paper or gd or interview you should know all about artificial intelligence or machine learning and also automation these two topics you can't afford to miss economy the most important area could be world economy could be indian economy any topic related to economy you should have at your fingertips work from home this has become very popular of late because of lockdowns and they may give a passage related to work from home the advantages the disadvantages everything related to work from home state of indian economy very important they may touch any dimension public sector private sector private sector banking sector state of indian economy very important digital economies again important privatization of banks an important topic center state relations now a lot of friction between the center and the states center state relations an important topic secularism secular parties another important topic and media could be print media electronic media broadcast media or uh, cyber media you have to have the information 
women empowerment very important and child labor an important topic now what are the tips i would like to give for reading comprehension skill these look very simple easy to say difficult to practice but those who practice these tips i'm sure they will get any competitive exam they will get the selection i can give in writing make it a habit what is the first tip over here make it a habit to read one or two passages every day a lot 30 minutes or 60 minutes 60 minutes if you are a slow reader for each passage 30 that way you have to read two passages you're a fast reader average reader 30 minutes each passage 15 minutes but make it a habit to read one or two passages every day when you read the passage this is an important tip the most important tip rather when you read the passage focus on implicit questions main theme and the writer's views here i would like to reiterate a lot of people say to answer the questions related to the passage you don't have to read the passage i don't agree that is practically impossible when it comes to answering questions related to implicit main theme writer's views and nowadays are asking questions related to these three areas only one or two questions related to explicit information but a lot of questions related to implicit information or implied information main theme of the passage writer's views to answer all these questions definitely you have to read the passage there's no choice as such and this is the most important tip i would like to give and when you read read analytically meticulously and focus on key words very important now when it comes to vocabulary what are the topics misspelled words confusing words word usage synonyms antonyms one word substitutes all these you have to learn these are like the categories but when you work on your vocabulary don't try to learn words in isolation try to learn from a context and at the same time when you every day i bring one editorial that's like a context when you learn words try to learn from a context that's the first tip i would like to give and when you learn the words from the topic try to get the lexical terms lexical terms means related words related to what a particular topic then simultaneously try to work on word combinations and word forms quite often they ask questions related to word forms the noun form the verb form the adjective form the adverb form and collocations or word combinations are equally important when it comes to close test this helps a lot related words and let's say you've got one word you have got one word like uh, acquitted you learn in isolation that's sheer waste of time it goes with it's a legal term then write all the related words try to create a word map acquitted convicted innocent guilty verdict all words that go with the eyewitness alibi all these are related words try to create the word map that will help in the exam you should have at least uh, 50 word maps on your own you have to create then you remember and uh, you will not forget now overall what is a strategy to sum it up what should be the strategy to get 20 plus practice exercises every day or make it a habit to read two passages that is one thing very important and practice exercises every day then what sort of exercises you should practice first one 30 editorial exercises every day i bring about three or four exercises all exam topics related exercises practice those then practice 30 to 50 mock tests and practice previous years papers and when you practice focus on context this is the most important tip again in this generally speaking when it comes to generally speaking when you read don't read casually try to develop contextual awareness that is important quite often i tell students you should have contextual awareness that helps in so many areas whether it is vocabulary related or comprehension related or grammar related also contextual awareness is very important and when you read passages every day when you work on the exercises don't read casually don't read from the answers point of view try to acquire that contextual awareness that will help in the exam you can answer so many questions based on contextual awareness how do you get this contextual awareness expose yourself to a variety of situations and try to read meticulously and get the lexical terms collocations word forms then you're ready for the exam if you follow these tips i'm sure you will get 20 plus out of 30 and uh, the most important thing make it a habit to read at least two passages every day that will help in the long run 
attend the editorial sessions every morning 8 to 9 and you get enriched exercises words so much enrichment takes place at the same time practice a lot of exercises when you practice try to get focus on contextual awareness that's all about the tips and the strategy how to get 20 plus in sbi Clerk 2021 i wish you all the best thank you very much